I love the feeling of getting done a hard week of work and being able to just go out and hang with the boys on a Friday night. It's one of those moments that makes life worth living. You know what I'm talking about? What the f My name is TJ and I'm working on an indie game where you run a medieval tavern. Everyone has been requesting bar fights and the only logical place to start is by giving fighting mechanics to the player because I'm not about to let the NPCs kick my ass. Nani? Now we're going to need animations for this and I'm going to start by using some free Mixamo animations for prototyping. So then if we get this system fully implemented, by the end of the video, I'll buy a very nice expensive pack, but I'm not gonna go out and spend money on something if I don't know if it's really going to be worth it in the end. If I wanted to do that, I'd just buy Twitter. So to start, I set up some new blend trees that will allow our animations to flow together when you move around. Slide to the left, slide to the right. The animations will blend together in a smooth manner, regardless of which direction you change to. So now that we have the player's movement, let's code a proper punching system. I'm going to set up a new set of input actions for the player and switch back and forth at the press of a single key. I then set up two quick punching animations, a jab with the left hand and a cross with the right. I also added a blocking animation, which we'll add code for later. Now we need some way to know when we hit an object. So I added sphere colliders to the player's hands. I then rigged up an animation event, and on the punch animation that fires at the start of the punch, we open the collider. And I also added another event at the end to close it. It's pretty hard to debug as it's only a function firing, so I added these red balls because they're simply a visual way to debug the amount of time that the colliders are open for. And now that we have these colliders, we're going to need something or someone to hit. And because I don't have a Caillou model yet, we're just gonna have to use the customers. So I added collision events to the punch collider so that when they collide with the NPC layer, it tells the NPC that it just got vibe checked. Now currently the NPC is just lying there taking it kind of like Allison in the House of the Dragon, so he's gonna need some animations as well. Thus I hop back over on Mixmo, grab some player getting hit animations, now in game, slap him from the right, he takes a hit from the right, slap him from the left, takes a hit from the left. Looks a little silly, doesn't matter. We'll replace it with better animations later. But now we need the NPCs to respond some way. And since our enemy is using a state machine, switching from movement to ordering to sitting to leaving, we need to add a new fight state. Upon taking a hit, they will now hop into their own fighter blend tree and square up to face whoever hit them. When this mode is engaged, the NPCs will now try to maintain a reasonable distance in the fight, either moving forwards or backwards. They'll follow you all over the tavern using their little Unity Nav Mesh component. Every few seconds, they will select an attack to perform. They'll move close to the player. Then when close enough, they'll swing. Then a cooldown is applied before they can attack again. I did also add combo attacks, so as the player, it's hard to guess if they're only gonna throw one punch or multiple. I then added the same punch colliders that the player has to the customer's hand, so now they can hit me back or hit each other. I needed to add some juice to our combat system, because currently it's so boring and dry that FIFA just awarded it a World Cup. So now when you get hit, there's a little bit of camera shake and a flash of red. Now if there is one thing in Unity that always brings a smile to my face, it's ragdolls. So after watching a Brackies tutorial, I got them set up on the customers pretty easily. Ooh, he needs some milk. By the way, as I'm editing this video, I realized I saved like 20 separate clips of ragdolls just eating it. I then gave the player the ability to drag the ragdoll post fight to clean up the tavern. You know, it's, it's like my dad always said, no body, no crime. Now the next important thing, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yo. No, TJ, I had a pretty good idea for your game. I oh, basically God. wanted to add a throwable chair. A throwable chair? Mm -hmm. Why? It would be a lot of fun. And uh, dude, I got like too many things to work on right now. There's absolutely no chance I'm adding it. <laughs> TJ, did you hear me ask? I'm telling you to do this. Your soul belongs to YouTube now, to the community. You will see our word, our wish will be your command. You will do as we say. Part of being a game dev is knowing what critical features to prioritize. I haven't learned this lesson yet, but maybe one day. But let's step back for a second. We're gonna need a Cassus Belly for our customers to start throwing hands with each other. Remember we have our drunk state for the customers? Well, we're gonna need to make a check every once in a while to see if they've had too much to drink. If that check has failed, they'll then become aggressive and start throwing hands at whoever is closest. Maybe this lad over here called our customer's wife a cow, and that's rude, because she's trying her best. 
Now I added a nice little button here to allow easier testing. It's basically the same thing as ordering a round of Jaeger bombs, but it makes our customers all hyper violent and is kind of fun. They all attack the enemy closest to them, whether it's another customer or, well, me. Next, I decided to add a nice little lock-on effect for the player, so you can now effectively always face your target. Now, normally, the player can turn their head from side to side, but that makes it difficult to hit your target if the body wasn't lined up perfectly, so now, only in the combat stance, of course, their body is locked to the head's rotation. Also, I want to take a minute to bask in how great of a coder I am. You see, this man here is currently running in circles, hitting himself, and I, I don't know why. Once I resolved that, I moved on to some sound. To start, I added a sound for when you hit an enemy. We don't want every single punch to sound the same, obviously, so I created a list of one or two or 25 different punch sound effects. I also need to add grunt sound effects for when a customer or a player gets hit. I recorded a little sound effect myself, opened it in Audacity, and then made a few copies changing the bass, treble, pitch, etc. so that we could play a random one and not the same exact sounding one each time. Also added a nice little death sound effect. It's an improvement, but if you don't hit a target, it sounds super weird and quiet. So I added a bunch of whoosh sound effects. I'd comment on how much nicer it sounds, but looks like we have yet another bug to fix. Anyway, I think the sounds are a lot better, but the combat is still a bit boring. So let's make the NPCs more reactive to the player's actions, because currently you can just combo them endlessly. So to do this, I added a block chance to the customer. My, my brother in Christ, I don't know what you're trying to block, but I wish you the best in blocking it. Now they are invulnerable when blocking, so you can't just pummel them endlessly. But this is just a reactive system. The player hits them, and then they block the next attack. We need some way for them to take preventative measures to avoid getting hit in the first place. But how will we telegraph our player's intentions to the enemy ahead of time? Well, just think about if it was IRL, you know, someone pulls their arm back, you're immediately gonna get out of the way. So we're gonna do a sphere cast all immediately in front of the player. What this does is return an array of anything in that sphere that matches the description of what we're looking for. In this case, customers. So once we have that array of customers, we'll simply let all of them know that a falcon punch is coming their way and allow them to make a react chance. This is kind of like the block chance that we set up, but now the customer will either block or dodge out of the way. Occasionally, sometimes they're still gonna get hit. And I added multiple dodges in different directions, so you never know which way they're headed. Now, after all of this was set up, I copied the logic to the customers so that they could also block or dodge each other's attacks and all is good. Well, as good as it can be when my tavern currently looks like the Balkans. Actually, let's let's talk about this for a minute, okay? Because I have poured my blood, my sweat, and my tears into this tavern, and these ragamuffins, these degens, these these dregs of society, they want to come in here and just ruin it for everyone? It's despicable. If only there was some way to prevent it from happening. Anyway, I felt it was a little too easy to pummel our opponents, so I added a little UI bar down at the bottom of the screen that shows your stamina. Your stamina slowly depletes while throwing punches. After a short pause, it'll start to regenerate. I've been trying to keep the HUD clean of basically any sort of unnecessary UI so it feels more immersive, so I wasn't actually a huge fan of the bar. Thus, I wound up removing it and upped the post-processing to add vinaigrette and blur. How do you say that word? I don't know and blur. The same logic is in place where your stamina depletes on punches thrown, and we fade to that post-processing volume as your stamina gets lower. It feels very immersive now. Uh, I'm a huge fan of it, but the logic is still the same. So now with the fighting system completed, we can replace all of our old Mixamo animations with that nice new pack. I'm gonna be using Kubold's fighting animation pack. I love it. It's so clean, so crisp. Conveniently, it was on sale and I was able to replace all the punches, dodges, blocks, movement, etc. all super easy and it looks much smoother now. I also added some better particle effects to allow us to know when an NPC is drunk. If you've made it this far in the video, you might as well subscribe. But thank you guys for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one.